there! Obviously, I'm not wearing any makeup right now and that's because I wanted to try a new video format. My friend, si Jean, she told me about this YouTuber called Bailey Sarian a few months ago and ever since she told me about Bailey Sarian, I've been so obsessed with her channel. As in, I think lahat ng videos niya about true crime I have watched. So her format is she comes on to camera barefaced and then while she's talking about the case that she's chosen for that video, she puts on her makeup. And ayun, I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting to do as well. Para at least meron akong ginagawa. Honestly, I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm gonna shy. <laughs> Cause I, ever since high school ata, nagme makeup na ako. Well, no high school, yung makeup ko lang was concealer, shampoo. Cause obviously, I have acne blemish problems. But you know, malapit na birthday ko, and I was thinking, grabe magto 25 na ako, 25 years of being embarrassed about my face. So, I guess, medro experiment din to on my part. To be a bit more confident. I want to. I want to. I want to succeed. But anyway, let's get on into it. The story we're going to dive into today is the case of Jane La Puebla. So this happened in Singapore. Jane La Puebla was a 26-year-old Filipino maid working in Singapore. At 1.45 p.m. on a Friday, on September 9, 2005, a 41-year-old cleaner named Maria Yi Marutham. She discovered a red and blue oblong sports bag at the corner of a mosaic wall near Orchard MRT Station. Shemper being the cleaner, she opened up the bag and experienced the most traumatic thing in the world. When she opened up the bag, she saw she saw a woman's face staring back at her. And obviously, that face was attached to a head. The contents of the red and blue oblong sports bag was a head wrapped in red plastic bag. And there were two other black trash bags in which arms cut above the elbow and legs were stored. That was the Maria Yi Marusam side of the discovery. Yung contents ng red and blue sports bag were just the disembodied head, arms, and legs. So where is her torso? Where is the rest of her body? Well, at 6.10 p.m., Alvin Lim Seng Leong was walking to a bus station along Lorini Road. He took a shortcut along Makrichi Reservoir Canteen and he noticed a black trolley bag. I don't know why he opened it or maybe it just looked suspicious. So he opened it and there he found the rest of the remains of Jane La Puebla. Within 12 hours of the discovery of the body, Police already had a suspect in their custody, which was Gwen Aguilar. So what happened? How did it all come to this gruesome conclusion? So who is Gwen Aguilar and why was she the suspect? Gwen Aguilar is a 29-year-old Filipino maid who was also working in Singapore. She's married and is a mother to two young sons at the time. The relationship between Gwen and Jane were described to be like sisters. So they were very close. So what happened? What came in between these two best friends to cause Gwen to commit such a gruesome act towards her sister, her best friend? Two days earlier, on September 7, 2005, that's a Wednesday, Jane was at the apartment of the employer of Gwen. They were in the kitchen cooking together. And you know, as sisters do, as best friends do, they were telling each other their problems and this led to them talking about about their financial difficulties. Gwen started asking Jane about the money that Jane owed her, which was in the amount of $2,000. Turns out this $2,000, half of it came from a third Filipino maid who borrowed it from a Singaporean loan shark. And the Singaporean loan shark was charging Gwen 20% interest. So basically 5-6. So Gwen brought it up to Jane asking when she'd pay it and Gwen Gwen suggested that maybe Jane should sell her video and digital camera so that she'd be able to pay off her debt. This agitated Jane and I guess Gwen wanted to calm her down. So she did. She tried to calm her down and then they did calm down. But then Gwen brought it up again that maybe 
Jane should sell her video camera and digital cameras in order to pay off the debt. And then this time, the second time that Gwen suggested it to Jane, nag-away na sila ng todo. Like, nagkasabunodan sila to the point na Gwen bit the arm of Jane really hard. And uh, later on, when they were examining the body of Jane, they saw a pretty deep bite mark. The fight extended from the kitchen all the way to the laundry room and it ended in the bedroom of Gwen. While they were in the bedroom, Gwen got a pillow from her bed and smothered Jane with it. And after a few seconds, Jane stopped struggling. So Gwen was crying because she thought that she had killed her best friend. But then again, after a while, Jane came to and she started to struggle again. But this time, Gwen strangled her with her own hands. And that pretty much sealed Jane's fate and she, she died then. The employers of Gwen did not know this, but for two days after the altercation between Jane and Gwen, Gwen kept the dead body of Jane in her room, just hidden in her room, and her employers didn't have a clue. So after two days, Gwen went to Mustafa shopping center where she bought a chopper, an axe, trash bags, two pairs of gloves, one latex, and one canvas. She was going to use this to chop up her body. She also bought a bolster, pillowcases, bed sheets, and even the green wallpaper which matched the walls of her employer. So she really thought of everything. So she got back to her apartment and dismembered Jane's body. And she stuffed the parts, the body parts, the head, the arms, and legs into one bag and the torso in another bag. So after she stuffed Jane's body in the bags, she also stuffed newspaper in it. I don't know why she did Like maybe she was trying to cover up the smell? Maybe she was trying to prevent leaks or something? I don't know. Parang yun yung hindi ko talaga magets but niya ginawa. But pay attention to this detail as it's important later on. At 12.30 of that day, September 9, 2005, she hailed a taxi and asked the taxi to bring her to the Orchard MRT station wherein she left one of the bags near the mosaic wall near the station. So this is the sad part about this because it was said that where she left this red and blue sports bag was a stone throws away from where they used to hang out a lot. Later, she went back to the apartment of her employees to get the second bag and then she hailed another taxi and went to Makrichi Reservoir to dump the other luggage bag. I forgot to mention that after their altercation in the bedroom, she cleaned the wall, she tried to scrub off as much blood as she could, but then remember, she bought green water wallpaper that matched the apartment. So that's what she did with those wallpapers. She used it to cover up the remaining parts of the wall where she couldn't scrub the blood off. Initially, there were rumors that the reason why this happened between Gwen and Jane was because they were involved in some kind of love triangle. And uh, when Gwen's family found out that there were rumors about Gwen being involved in a love triangle and that's why she killed Jane, they were very upset and they were saying, that Gwen could never do something like that and that she was framed and her husband Edwin even said to the media that his wife could never do something like that to Jane much less cheat on him. What led the police to Gwen? Well remember those newspapers I told you about na stin off niya dun sa bag with Jane's body? In those newspapers dun sa front page na one of those newspapers was a sticker with her employer's apartment and name on it. That's why in 12 hours they already had Gwen in their custody because of that. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a killer or anything, but that's kind of a dumb move, isn't it? Pero I guess she was really desperate. Although Gwen was initially charged for murder, her charge was reduced from murder to manslaughter. And although the court could have sentenced her to life in prison, they only sentenced her to 10 years. I mean, when I read that, I was so taken aback kasi Tangina, pumatay ka ng tao in like 10 years lang. Another detail that I read was registered maid kasi si Gwen sa Singapore. But si Jane was unregistered. So like, Jane's family kind of had a hard time getting Jane's remains back and stuff. I didn't really talk that much about Jane. I'm sorry. But Jane was also married and she was also a mother of a 9-year-old boy at the time. And I just realized, magka 
age kami nung anak niya kasi at the time he was 9 and uh, now he's probably 25, 24, 25 and wala lang. I guess I can't help but wonder when I was his age and he was going through something like that and I wonder where he is now or like what's happening to him now. Like I said, Gwen's sentence was reduced to 10 years only and another reason that they stated for this was because she was mentally ill because she was diagnosed with depression and I mean initially I was like what? I don't understand. I'm depressed. I have depression. I won't kill anybody. Pero, I guess, you know, she was depressed and it was mainly brought about by her financial circumstances and... Okay, wait. I'm not articulating my thoughts very well, but I'm going to try again. I was thinking, what could bring someone to go from being best friends, almost like sisters, with someone, but then have the guts, have the be able to stomach like chopping her up and stuffing her in bags and leaving her in public places like i just didn't understand that and I, so i was wondering about that but i guess she was so depressed and stressed and maybe she wasn't in her right mind but at the same time there's also the factor that remember i told you guys na at first she cried because she thought she had killed her best friend but then nabuhay naman si jane so like that's what i don't understand but mo pati nuloy i guess she was scared that Jane could have filed charges against her. Although, I don't think Jane would have because she's unregistered maid siya in Singapore. Eh. Yeah, I don't know guys. <laughs> I didn't finish my makeup, sorry. I'm so proud of that in the foundation part. But that's just because I really need it. <laughs> I'm just doing a simple makeup look. I didn't want to do anything like too out there. Okay, so I'm just going to finish the rest of my makeup. Okay, so here's the final look. I really didn't want to do anything too crazy for my first makeup look, honestly. I think na nyo naman I've done this before. Let me know your thoughts about this case, guys. It's just sad because obviously it's sad. But it just makes me think now. you never know. Parang you never really know the people who are around you. You don't know what they're capable of. You don't know what they're going through. And no matter how close you are, there's always just going to be that barrier na parang hindi mo talaga ma-overcome. Kasi syempre, parang that's part of who they are na as people. And some people put up walls and I don't know, yun lang. Um, let me know if you guys like this format, yung hindi ako nagbabasa lang. And and parang mas nagchichikhan lang tayo, mas chill lang. Or let me know if masyadong nakakatakot yung first frame na wala akong makeup. Then maybe I'll stop this. Pero yun, try try lang. Let's see what sticks. Let's see what works. Comment down below if there are other cases that you want me to dive into. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for hanging out with me again. Bye, babe!